you've been doing a heck of a job covering the NFL all year long for CBS and you join us all the time on Time to Shine and you've been with the Falcons, you've been with the Patriots over the last few days. Do you get any kind of sense leading up to this game that the Falcons are flying under the radar? Well, first of all, I appreciate the compliment because you know how much I respect what you do. I don't know if they're flying under the radar, but today was a great example of it. Spending time with the Falcons earlier in the day, they had the general sort of media coverage. I mean, it's a Super Bowl. Everything's elevated. Yep. A good number of people out there. Immediately after that was done, headed across town to the Patriots. Jam-packed. I mean, shoulder to shoulder for Bill Belichick's availability as w the players broke off and they're at their smaller podiums. It was a madhouse, and that tells you just the magnitude of what the New England Patriots bring to a Super Bowl. So in terms of the coverage, I think that the Falcons are flying under the radar. I don't know how that necessarily affects how they're approaching this game. Bill Belichick seems happy, and I, I've always had a great relationship with Coach Belichick yeah. and always loved talking to him, and I'm sure you talk lacrosse with him. Sure, whenever you yeah, have he's an meetings. Annapolis guy, too. Yeah, I, I, I love Coach Belichick, but he doesn't always smile. No. He's been smiling, and you kind of get the sense, Evan, you tell me you're around it, he really likes this team. I think he loves this team because they're resilient. They're a tough bunch, and that's what he really respects about football teams, especially ones that can be successful. But as you look at him here, putting smile, that was today at their media availability, and I think he gets Super Bowl week. He's not a guy that likes to, obviously, we, we know his press conferences every week. If you ask him questions about injuries or about schematics, he's not going to give you anything. But what you get during Super Bowl week, just to take fans there, you have folks from all over the country that are writing stories on specific angles. So he'll get a question today about his dad and his scouting background for the Naval Academy. He's going to open up to that. He's going right. to smile. He's going to tell you those stories. So you get this wide spectrum of topics and you honestly get a better version of Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick, in my opinion, is the best coach of all time. How does he stay motivated? This was interesting, too, to talk about the way he approached today's availability. He said that it's not worked him. He loves the football stuff. That's I'll never awesome. forget hearing this one story. He talked about Ted Marchabroda, the old Colts coach, who was with the Ravens at one point when they first came in. It was after he had passed, and he talked about his early times with him, with the Colts, in the hour that he would drive in the car with him to and from practice, and they would only talk about football not about family. It was one of those things where for us, it's like, well, you know, you work all day in football. Don't you want to just get away from it? He doesn't ever want to. So for him getting up every day, doing all this, grinding on tape, he admitted it today. It's not work. So motivation is never an issue. I gave my take earlier. You were there. What was it like seeing Tom Brady get emotional talking about his dad? Well, I, it got lost for me a little bit in the opening night ceremonies because it's just a madhouse and a circus. So it actually took watching it back to really get a sense of the power of, of what that question evoked out of him. And what I think he brought context to today was just what his family has been through. And look, we're all going to jump to deflate gate. And maybe that is a big part of it. Maybe the things we don't know, but it's clear that he is as close as you could be with his father. So it means a lot to him, the things he said. And I'll never forget the one time I got to interview him this year, Tom Brady after a game, he ended the interview by thanking his mother, his family, right into the camera. Wow. And that's, that's different. So there's something special there. So it brought that emotion out of him. We have been on the air for 53 minutes and we haven't mentioned Dan Quinn. <laughs> and, you know, I think when you start talking about the genius of the Falcons, Sometimes the head coach almost gets a little bit lost in the shuffle. I like Dan Quinn a lot. What makes him a good fit for these Falcons? What makes him unique? Well, the word that came up today is he talks in bumper stickers. <laughs> so basically, it's, it's the things he says you can put on a bumper sticker as a motto. And I'm a guy that hates coach cliches. I don't like coach speak. But what I've learned in the time I've spent around the Falcons is that there's the coach speak and the bumper sticker, but then Dan Quinn follows it through. He's able to connect with 22, 23 to 32 to 36 year olds if it's Dwight Freeney. So he has this humanity, this personality that is kind of infectious. So you get the brotherhood terms, the ironing sharp and iron, all that stuff we've all read or heard, but then he backs it up. And the way he explains it is 
he puts the message out there so it's easy to digest for the player, and then they back it up with their actions. So I think Dan Quinn's proven to be a special motivator, and then he backs that up with his football acumen, especially on the defensive side, which is special. How about the relationship that Quinn has with his GM, Thomas Dimitrov, who, of course, used to work for Bill Belichick? Exactly. It, it, it's always the fun stuff about the NFL doing the web and the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon type <laughs> stuff. And, and Dimitrov and Quinn have figured out this relationship well. And you think about Dimitrov, he's a guy that was on the hot seat. He had all the power in the previous regime. They bring in Quinn, and now Quinn has say in the final 53. The way they put it is prior to the last season when Quinn came in, it was they were going to be in lockstep with every decision made. And it's a relationship that has really blossomed. And you only have to look to this defense to really see that. Four rookies starting, three second-year players. That's complete confidence for Quinn in the draft picks that Dimitrov is making. And then conversely, Dimitrov thinking Quinn can develop these guys and they can play right away.